The most common mistake with cage setup is putting too little bedding. Many new owners put only 2 to 3 inches of bedding because that's what they see in pet shops. Unfortunately, this is not enough because in nature's hamsters sleep and store their food in tunnel systems that they make underground. What I personally recommend is putting at least 8 inches of bedding so that your hamster can dig some proper tunnels. Deeper bedding also has some additional benefit. The first one is odor control. When the bedding is shallow, the pee will spread around the cage, spreading the smell. If you have more bedding and a cage of appropriate size, you will have to clean less. This is because you will only need to spot clean and not clean out the whole cage. I remove only a third of the bedding every three months. The next common mistake is not compressing the bedding when filling the cage. The bedding needs to be pressed down and compressed and it should not be fluffed up. This is very important for tunnel stability because if the bedding is not compressed, the tunnels will not hold. For additional stability, I would recommend putting layers of hay between layers of bedding. Another mistake is not providing a multi-chamber hideout. Multi-chamber hideouts are hideouts that have multiple rooms. And usually your hamster will use one room for sleeping, one room for storing food, and another room for peeing and pooping. This is very important because with one chamber hideouts, your hamster might pee on the food. And they will also sleep in their pee. Multi-chamber hideouts need to have a roof that is removable for easy cleaning, and they also should not have a bottom. They should be set on stilts so that your hamster can use them to start their own nest. This is especially beneficial for older hamsters because they might not have the energy to build their own nest. Another mistake I see often is not providing enough hideouts. Your hamster needs hideouts throughout the cage so they can feel more safe. This is because hamsters are prey animals and they are afraid of open space. If the cage is empty, they might feel afraid to go out and use the cage. For additional feeling of safety, you can also use bendy bridges and tunnels just to make the cage more crowded. Another potentially dangerous mistake is putting platforms that are too tall in the cage. Hamsters are very delicate animals and they can get injured very easily. Hamsters have very bad eyesight and they have no depth perception. This means they cannot tell if they are in a tall place. This means that if they are on a tall platform, they will just walk off of it and fall down. The maximum fall height I would recommend is 10 cm for dwarf hamsters and 15 for Syrians. Now that we mentioned platforms, another potentially dangerous mistake is not supporting heavy objects in the cage. These are things like sand baths, dig boxes, or heavy branches. If you place them directly on bedding, your hamster might decide to dig under them and they will get squished. Platforms are a great way to support heavy objects. A mistake I see less commonly nowadays, but that still happens, is not providing a sand bath. A sand bath is an essential part of every cage setup. Hamsters produce excess oils in their fur, so rolling in sand and digging helps them remove those excess oils. Sand baths are also often used by hamsters as a toilet or just for digging, which provides enrichment. You can put a hideout in it, you can put a bendy bridge over it, or you can just use a container that naturally provides privacy. When it comes to supporting things, I often see people not put any support under the water dish. The water dish should be on a platform or a hideout with a flat surface. If the water dish is not properly supported, it will end up in the bedding. This means your hamster will not have access to water and also the bedding will get wet, which can lead to mold. Another mistake I often see is not providing chew toys and boredom breakers. Chew toys are absolutely essential because hamsters' teeth never stop growing. When hamsters chew on chew toys, they will naturally keep their teeth short. When it comes to boredom breakers, those are toys that provide your hamster with enrichment. There are different types, but for most, you need to put food inside and your hamster needs to try and get it out. Another type are forage toys, where the food is more easily accessible, but a little bit hard to find. Mistake number 10 is not providing textures. 
textures are beneficial for your hamster because they provide variety but also other benefits. For example, different substrates can be used for digging and you can also hide some food inside for your hamster to search for. Besides substrates, additional textures can be branches, rocks, cork tunnels or sphagnum moss. The rougher textures are also beneficial for keeping nails short. A bonus mistake, only because I think it's not happening often nowadays, is not putting a wheel in the hamster's cage. Nowadays, everyone knows that a hamster wheel should be provided, but unfortunately, very often is the wrong type of wheel. The wheel needs to be upright. Saucer wheels are dangerous because the hamster can fly off and also they will bend your hamster's spine and cause long-term damage. Mesh and wire wheels should never be used because they can cause bumble foot and they can even break your hamster's foot. The size of the wheel is also very important because a small wheel will bend your hamster's spine. The absolute minimum I would recommend for dwarf hamsters would be 8 inches and for Syrian hamsters 10 inches. I would never go under that.